Welcome back, everybody, to the Back Nine coverage of round one of the 2020 Wanderlust Open presented by Wander Disc Golf. 1717 Brewing and Prodigy Discs. Again, I'm Brian Earhart bringing you some solo commentary on the day. And it's been fun. The Ewing course that they gave us was very challenging off the tee. There's a ton of difficult par threes, like I had mentioned earlier. And it's been a lot of fun competing against these uh, three other competitors. Me and Jordan are tied at two down, and Terry and Gannon are still at even. Let's jump into the back nine. So hole number 10 is most definitely the signature hole here at Ewing Park. 615 feet, par three, downhill the entire way, and the basket's tucked in this really nice cove of trees. It's definitely gettable with the right wind conditions and the right arm, and I think any one of us has a chance of getting there with the right shot. Jordan, pull this panic out again. Just turned it over a little bit too much. We had a little bit of a left to right that we were having to deal with, so I'm trying to beat this crosswind with something overstable. And that's a Zeus that I just threw. Didn't quite get the shape right. About 120 from the basket. Gannon tried going hyzer flip to play the crosswind and it really helped him out. Shot faded out a little bit too much at the end of the flight, but he'll have no problem getting up and down from there. I think Terry pulling out that nuke again. And he gets a beautiful turn mid-flight. Just like Gannon's, it's fading out a little bit early. Pretty similar positioning to Gannon. And Jordan gets kind of a rough skip off of the only patch of hard dirt there, right next to the basket. There's a zone. And Terry absolutely wanted this one. <laughs> Did not happen. He's going to have a little bit of a comebacker there. Speaking of comebackers, Jordan with a fantastic putt for, uh, for the three save. Terry from about 35. And another clean putt. Terry's gonna make it. Terry's gonna make it. I know he is. Bunch of threes, we're moving into hole number 11. Hole 11 was turned into an island just for today, or the day that we played, and the island was not large, to say the least. Um, they really pinched off this island green, and they, they wanted to play at stroke and distance if we missed the island, so everybody everybody here is kind of laughing at the, the danger afoot. Jordan going low shot, just gets over the wall, and he's 20 from the basket. Great shot. And I'm just trying to play a spike with this tsunami. I'm trying to maybe stall it out to the right a little bit and just kind of have it run out of juice into the island. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize it was that close to going out of bounds. I must have juiced it a little bit too much, but I am safe. Gannon's coming up to the tee pad saying, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss. This is gonna be the worst shot ever. And 
And as you hear Jordan say textbook, that was about as perfect of a hyzer as you could have thrown. So. That was hilarious. He was complaining about grip locking the shot just like Gannon was. And he did miss the shot, but he got an extremely lucky bounce over the wall. Let's go, Discraft. That one felt good to get. And after relentlessly doubting himself, Gannon taps in the easiest birdie of the hole. And after getting exceptionally lucky, Terry also taps in a birdie. Hole number 12 is the first true par 4 that we're seeing on the course. 676 feet OB on or left of the path that we see here. The fairway that the drone is flying on still presents a lot of challenging uh, placements to get up and down for birdie. The closer you are to the OB path, the better. I'm shooting two. And Jordan is... <laughs> throwing a huge turnover here with that drift. Not being known as a sidearm player, he does rely on this shot a lot and you can definitely tell that was perfect. And I kind of feel grateful on this hole just to be able to finally throw a lefty hyzer after all the sidearms I've been having to throw. And I was just hoping to maybe get a path skip, maybe land in bounds. Any result is fine, but that's a pretty nice spot to be. And this was a shot that I was surprised of. After seeing how solid Gannon's backhand was, he is playing this shot very conservatively. Low, controlled sidearm with a, it looks like a D2. And the positioning is just not great over there. Terry does rely on the sidearm a bit more and got just a bit more distance out of there than, than Gannon did. A little bit too far to the right there. He's going to have to maybe pitch out or throw kind of a fancy shot to get to the basket. And I am throwing the opposite of a fancy shot. That's a force. Tiny bit short. And you didn't get to see this full flight, but Jordan throws the exact same disc he threw off the tee and just sticks it. That's a beautiful shot. Terry also going with two identical shots and that worked out well for him. And this is another play that I was pretty surprised about. It seemed like from where he was at, he had a pretty open lane to the basket, but just the discipline to stay in his own lane was, I guess, impressive uh, in itself. And that had zero chance coming out of my hand. And that's a great three, wow, it out way than especially going flick, flick. <laughs> Jordan with the prettier of the two birdies. Try, trying to get dunked up?
and it says we're moving into hole 13 here, but the path that this drone is flying, uh, this is actually not the hole that we're about to play. We're actually playing a par four that bends all the way around the corner to the left, and there is tall grass uh, OB on the right side. But uh, as you'll see, the righties are going to throw a big long hyzer around the corner, and I'm going to be throwing a, a big turn over here. Jordan going panic. Pretty textbook move there. And he's right in the middle. The basket is then another 200 feet or so tucked into a cove of trees. Terry going nuke. Much hyzer as possible. And I felt like this was an opportunity to get a little bit aggressive here. Finally having a big turnover line. And I definitely got on it. That's a Zeus. And I got a little bit farther than Terry and Jordan there. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> Another textbook Heiser. And he should be right in the middle as well. And this is what I was talking about, throwing a little chip hyzer into the cove. There is OB directly behind the basket. And Jordan narrowly escapes. And as unfortunate as that looks, I, I knew I made a mistake on that one. I shanked it a little bit too far right. So I'm okay with being out of bounds there. If I had missed that putt, I might not have been okay with it, but that was uh, that was nice to get. And Terry Carden, another birdie. Hole number 14, this was the hole that was previewed previously. Um, this is a dead straight par three, very long, slightly uphill, plays about 460 or 470. Um, we decided in that moment as a card to play tall grass out of bounds just to make the two a little bit more rewarded. And Terry is going to try to get it actually with a sidearm, which I was surprised about. But he does throw a long sidearm, for sure. One of the longer ones I've seen. And Gannon did not want it to be out of bounds. But being the only one in the card that didn't want it out of bounds, we kept it, and he threw a chip shot to revolt. <laughs> and I'm definitely going for this one, finally being a lefty. Giving me a little bailout bail zone to the right. I just threw it a little bit too low. Either way, I don't care. <laughs> you put it close enough to the basket, you get a free input. Even if you're obese. Oh, that's good. And they didn't show Jordan's drive there, but he did just land similar to where I did. 70, 80 short of the basket. Great shot. Gannon throws a spike hyzer, about 25.
Nice putt there from Gannon. And yeah, this hole just fits in again with the rest of this course that they had us play to, uh, that day. It was just another one of those par threes where it, it, if you didn't throw an absolutely excellent shot, you didn't quite have a chance to get a birdie. So off the tee, it was definitely the most demanding one of the day. Going into hole number 15 after a bunch of threes, 420 feet downhill, basket is perched just below the left side of this beautiful tree and just past the underside of it. So you can't necessarily slide one up there because the roots next to the tree are stopping. You kind of have to throw a long flexing shot that lands softly on that sloping green. And Terry's going with that same force he threw downhill earlier and did not get the nose down on it. It'll be about 50 from the basket. Come on, oh, get out of here. Get out of here. And Gannon makes the correction with his forehand and it gets a little bit more drift at the mid flight. And he gets the path skip, but unfortunately it sent him a bit long. He's about as long as Terry as uh, is short. And I'm taking on an onyx here, trying to play a little bit slower shot, similar to Gannon's. And I threw it more similarly to Terry's. A little bit lower, so I did get a bit of a flare forward, but still about 45 from the basket. And for a righty backhand only player like Jordan, one of the tougher tee shots he was gonna have to face all day. Luckily he did sneak through the trees and it did give him a pretty nice lie. No. And his step putt looks so dialed. That putt looked like it was in the entire way. Such a clean, simple putting stroke. And the banger goes in. That was one of the few putts that round that finally felt like it came out of the hand exactly how I wanted it to. Definitely a nice birdie with how nice Jordan and Terry are both playing. Get up. That's an awesome putt from where he was at. And we're going to move into hole number 16. Easiest hole in the course, 254 feet. I think the only hole on the course that was under 300 feet. Subtle downhill, basket off to the left. There really is only one shape off the tee and it's a subtle hyzer with something slow unless you were throwing a lefty forehand like myself i'm going tsunami i'm trying to throw this a little bit slower and have it flare up to the basket and it worked Here's Jordan. I think this is a pyro. I think Axiom makes it. Seems like a pretty overstable mid range. And that's picture perfect. Terry going zone, I believe. And that is a pretty straight zone. That held straight for quite some time. Nice shot from Terry. And then this is one of the only mid-ranges I've seen, or I saw Gannon throw pretty much the whole day. This is an M1. And his down-tempo game is so clean. Kind of got an unfortunate kick there, but it was really impressive to watch him, especially with how long his extension is. 
being able to down tempo on that and then comes back with a beautiful putt. Great birdie. Terry was trying to pull the unsanctioned tournament card and picking up Jordan's lie, but Jordan wanted to play it out. Hole number 17 follows the uh, theme of this XL Ewing course. Very challenging tee shot to get to a very elongated basket placement. This is 425 feet uphill, low ceiling. If you want to get there with an air shot, your window of execution is very small. I think the best shot in the hole for the shape of it is a lefty roller like I'm trying. However, I lost my roller disc in practice, so I'm trying to force over an XL here. And it's definitely not a heat at all. That's way right. And then this type of shot right here is pretty perfect for how Jordan likes to throw. He throws a lot of low bullet shots with a distance driver and he stood up on stood up on it just a little bit too much and Terry goes baby hyzer flip with the nuke and I thought he was gonna get right up to the basket but just didn't get any skip in that grass And he knows he doesn't like it right away. Very common miss to just throw a little bit too high into these trees. He's going A2 forehand. And this is a shot right here. This little chip shot forehand for Jordan is something he used to not have at all so kudos to him for putting the time in because it's definitely a helpful shot to have and I'm trying to do the same thing here with the zone and I luckily did get a skip and I'm right next to the pin nice putt from Jordan He's played pretty clean all day at this course. Felt like I was having to really putt my butt off to keep up with him. Wasn't really getting himself into any trouble. And we're gonna move into hole number 18. Par four, 715 feet. The drone is flying through a middle gap here. Most righties are gonna be throwing a hyzer to the right of that tree and then putting it into a landing zone right about here and then throwing a straight shot to this basket that's protected by this big tree. There is a left side gap as well. It's a very park style par four. And I just wanted to throw this one as hard as I could, as high as I could. And scramble from wherever I was at. This was actually a, a blind round for me, so I, I knew that as long as I put it in play, I'll be good. Jordan going pan. 
panic through that right gap I was talking about. Kind of a tough camera angle to watch from, but he is in a pretty decent spot. And something I love about Jordan and Terry's disc golf game is they tend to throw four discs per round total. They, they keep their bag extremely simple and they, they rely on their strengths really well. And Gannon smokes this shot. Again, tough to tell truly how big the shot was from that angle, but he outdrove the entire card. Going low force, trying to get a little flare to the right. Yeah, and this is one of the only like unique discs that Terry was pulling out of his bag, and that was a ESP machete. Jordan going fireball again, and that's a great shot. I believe that's an A2 from Gannon. 715 feet and he's throwing a chip shot A2. Below average run from Terry. He's gonna have about 40 feet to the basket here to save his, uh, save his par. And he does again. He kept his promise running everything but Definitely stayed in the game by hitting all these awesome comebackers. I mean, that was definitely a relief for me. I knew I had to catch Jordan. I knew I had some putting to do, and he just kept putting him right next to the basket. And a respectable birdie and a respectable round from Gannon. And on this layout for Jordan to shoot a neg eight, that's wildly impressive. Jordan is eight down. I'm in second at seven down. Terry is five down and Gannon finished with neg four. Thank you for tuning in to round one at Ewing Park. We're going to see you for round two at Pickard Park in Indianola, Iowa, and I can't wait to see you there.